Tech family, I am excited. It's not every day that I buy a laptop for myself. But one of the main reasons I started this channel was because I personally was on the hunt for the highest powered portable laptop that runs cool, quiet and looks great. And I wanted to share that journey with you. Seriously, check the intro of my initial videos from this time last year on the channel. What makes it so hard for me to find a laptop is because I cross many high-end use cases. I edit 4K video, I program and I game. And I do all this on the go. Plus, I'm super fussy when it comes to fan noise, heat and a good screen. Let me tell you why I was on the hunt for a new laptop. I have been using the MacBook Pro 16 for video editing and programming. I know a lot of YouTubers will tell you the MacBook Pro 16 can handle 4K video and yes, they would be correct. But my videos have multiple camera angles, all recording 4K, B-roll, effects, etc. My upgraded MacBook Pro 16 was being pushed to its limits. The laptop was heating up to uncomfortable levels and there were tons of drop frames during editing. My Aero 17 on the other hand does have a better cooling solution than the MacBook Pro and far better graphics, but it is annoyingly loud even when not under load. Its fans pulsate, which means they turn on and off and they are high pitched, which is super noticeable even on quiet mode. Heck, when I try to re-record a voiceover, I have to power down the laptop completely. Also, when I do a hardware-based render, there were erroneous artifacts in the video, causing me to have to re-render it using the slower software mode. That's why my Aero spends most of its life in a drawer, other than when I use it for gaming. So, I've been on the hunt for a new laptop. What I wanted was a step up in power so I could edit without drop frames. I also wanted a laptop that was quiet. I don't want to be distracted by fan noise when doing light tasks. Plus, I want to try streaming and don't want a laptop with fans so loud that they can be heard through the mic. I also needed more than one terabyte of storage. My MacBook Pro 16 has a terabyte and it has been the bane of my existence. Each one of my videos needs around 200 gig of storage, plus my B-roll library that I frequently look through is 500 gig. I was constantly having to move files around to free up space, which is such a waste of time. I also wanted the laptop to run cool to the touch. You might say, Josh, why don't you build a desktop? Up until now, I live in a small apartment that doesn't have a desk. I didn't have room for one. However, I am moving to a bigger apartment with plenty of space, but I run a YouTube channel that has a laptop focus to it. I think it's super important that I perform real high-end tasks on the laptop so I can give you accurate information on what they are like. Maybe one day I'll expand to covering desktops, but not right now. Originally, I was eyeing the new Alienware M17 R3, the 8-core Intel 10th gen processor with a 2080 Super Graphics card. I heard its cooling solution had been improved and was excited to game with such graphics, but it was a pretty big device. And at $3,000 with 32GB of soldered RAM and an Intel CPU, my heart wasn't in it. I really wanted a high-end AMD CPU with a strong NVIDIA graphics card, like most of us right now. I was also considering the updated Aero 17 for 2020, but they didn't change the cooling solution. It'll probably have all the issues of my model. And I did buy the XPS 17, but it drained the battery like crazy while performing high-end tasks, so I returned it. By the way, I was planning to get my new laptop with a 4K screen for editing on the go and a high refresh rate monitor for the new apartment to take advantage of the graphics while gaming. But everything changed when I was in Best Buy looking at laptops that you asked me to check out. I saw the HP Omen and fell in love with it. The first thing I noticed was the screen, super bright, great colors, and the white balance looked cold. I love screens with a colder white balance. I normally check the keyboard and palm rests of laptops in stores to see how warm they are. If they are warm running the demo that they run on repeat in the store all day, then they are certainly going to be too warm for me when I put some load on them. The Omen, however, was cold to the touch. Plus, it had that perfect combination, a powerful AMD processor paired with a high-end NVIDIA dedicated graphics card. All for a little over a thousand US dollars. So five minutes later, I was walking out of Best Buy as a proud owner of one. Unfortunately, another five minutes later, I realized I had bought the wrong model with eight gig of RAM and a 512 gig SSD, rather than the slightly more expensive one with 16 gig of RAM and a one terabyte SSD. As Best Buy classifies an exchange like this as a return, I decided to just buy the other model as well. So in this review, I'll also tell you if there are any noticeable manufacturing differences. When I got home, I first checked the displays. Both units have surprisingly good panels with great colors clocking in at 99% sRGB. They are also very bright at above 300 nits. And as they have matte displays, which aren't reflective, being above 300 nits makes the Omen very usable in a bright environment. 
Neither of my units had any dead pixels, however I did notice some differences between the panels. The model with 16GB of RAM had a panel that was brighter with better contrast, but I noticed it had some backlight bleed, whereas the panel in the 8GB model had no bleed, which is rare on an IPS display. I'd show you, but it didn't really show up in my long exposure photo. By the way, they both use the same LG panel, LG D05FE. The panels do have a 144Hz refresh rate, which is awesome, and aren't grainy at all, which is good for a matte display. When it comes to performance, this laptop is an absolute beast, and that is an understatement. What makes it even more impressive is it runs super cool and quiet. Let me show you. In Cinebench R20, which really pushes the CPU, it annihilates the competition. A score of 4400 is bonkers, nothing can catch it. Not the 17 inch Dell XPS with its Intel 8 core 10th gen CPU, nor the MacBook Pro 16 8 core or the Aero 17. Take a look at this. To get the Aero 17 close to that score, I had to undervolt it, overclock it, run it in a loud fan profile, use a cooling pad and call my mother. Even then, it can't touch the HP Omen score and the Omen can beat it in its default fan profile, which isn't that loud. I mean, have a look at how quiet the Omen is in comparison to all these other high-end Intel laptops. Now, take a look at the temperatures that you would actually feel. This laptop runs super cool. Even the CPU temps destroy the competition, and Geekbench scores tell the same story. Performance like this was precisely what I was looking for, especially as this laptop is just so cool and quiet. Alright graphics. This laptop has a full powered 1660 Ti, no Max Q. It puts in some impressive scores. Here is Firestrike, and now TimeSpy. Now let's zoom in on just the GPU score of TimeSpy. What you'll notice is it performs similar to the RTX 2060 in the Dell XPS 9700 and it doesn't use up your battery while doing so like the XPS 17 does. So props to HP for understanding how much power their laptop actually needs. For gaming, I had no problems maxing out hitting the 144 FPS on League of Legends and for the AAA game Borderlands 3, I got a little less than 60 FPS on the highest possible settings. Dropping settings down saw me hit frames of around 70 FPS FPS for high and well above that in medium. All in all, this laptop can run AAA games. As I'm moving apartments in three days, I didn't run my full set of real world tests. However, I did run a Premiere Pro export test as that's a primary task I expect to use the laptop for. No surprises, it was faster than the competition. To be honest, I'm pretty confident this laptop would crush all the real world tests I would normally throw at it. Audio latency was surprisingly good and I actually loaded the League of Legends client while running the test which is a pretty intensive task. The laptop comes with Wi-Fi 6 and performs very fast as expected. On the SSD front, both drives are super speedy and so is the RAM, which runs at 3200 MHz in dual channel. By the way, even my 8GB of RAM model has dual channel RAM, which is good. You can upgrade both the SSD and RAM. A couple of important notes here. Even though the back of the laptop seems easy to take off, it isn't. There are a lot of clips holding the back in place. I broke some when opening the laptop. Be careful, I'll post a link to the spludging kit I used in the description below. Now, Ryzen does not use Intel XMP, so many RAM kits do not run at their advertised speeds, which I found out the hard way. I ordered a Ballistics and HyperX kit that were both advertised at 3200 MHz. The Ballistics run at 2666 and the HyperX at 2400. Props to Jared for passing along a helpful article that lists RAM that will work at the advertised speed for AMD. Link in the description below. I ended up buying a different crucial 32GB of RAM kit, which worked well. Some more good news, there is a second M.2 slot available which is great as I put in a 2TB Samsung 970 EVO Plus drive. So with 3TB of space the storage problem of mine is finally solved. The chassis as a whole feels well constructed and the lid does open with one hand. But when you look closely, there are manufacturing issues that you don't see in laptops like the MacBook Pro 16. For example, the right side of the trackpad is a little more depressed than the left on both units. Also, the hinge on the left side of my 16GB of RAM one doesn't look parallel and is kind of at an angle compared to the right. But honestly, the price of these laptops is so low for the incredible value you get, so I'm going to give HP a pass here. I was worried that the somewhat sharp edge of the front of the laptop would be uncomfortable on my wrists, but it wasn't at all. Also, you're going to be wiping these laptops down a lot because they are fingerprint magnets. The ports are ample, which is great, with HDMI, Ethernet, mini display, 3 USB-A and 1 USB-C. It doesn't have Thunderbolt as this is an AMD laptop and that's Intel tech. Hopefully soon we'll get AMD laptops with USB 4 which will offer those same speeds. 
The SD card reader is very slow, so I'll continue to use an external one. However, I'd rather have one in the laptop than not, just in case. Also, the USB ports are all the slower Gen 1, which is unfortunate. Here's how the webcam looks and sounds. Honestly, it's pretty bad and I'd avoid doing anything important on it. By the way, unfortunately the laptop can't be charged over USB-C, so you will have to carry around the 200 watt power brick. The laptop weighs 4.6 pounds and with the charger, another 1.4. Manufacturers, please give us the option of USB-C charging for these powerful devices. Yes, I won't be able to fully power the laptop for high-end tasks, but it provides a nice option to bring a lighter charger on days that I don't need that. Props to Razer for being one of the few manufacturers to do this. The keyboard feels amazing to use, best keyboard I've used in a long time, and better than the Arrows. Spacious, ample key travel, and the right tactile feel. Keys are backlit in zones, including secondary functions. I do like how there is these little lights that come on when certain modes are enabled, like when the volume is muted. Super helpful. The only issue is the placement of the delete key. There is a pause key where it would normally be. This caused me to make a very small number of typing errors. The trackpad is decent and works well enough, but it isn't one of the better ones I've used as it's not that smooth. The audio from the speakers comes out the side of the laptop and they don't get that loud but I never found myself struggling to hear anything and the quality is good enough. It's no MacBook Pro 16, but all in all, it's very usable. I really didn't do extensive battery tests, but I was getting about four hours with the screen slightly dimmed while writing this review. This kind of makes sense as the battery isn't the largest at 69 watt hours. Please note, if you unplug the power, the screen dims and colors become a little fluoro. You can fix this by turning off Very Bright in the AMD Radeon software. On battery, in performance mode, the laptop was throttled to 20 watts of power running at 2.6 gigahertz. However, on occasion when I just pulled out the power cable and it switched to Windows Better Battery mode, I saw the CPU hitting 3.9 gigahertz on all cores. So there must be a way to run it at full power. Lastly, price. I bought mine for $1,050 for the 8GB model with 512GB SSD and $1,150 for the 16GB model with 1TB. I actually paid a bit more, but Best Buy had one of their regular rotating sales the following week, and I called them and they price matched, which was great. If you don't see these laptops for the price I paid, don't get frustrated. As mentioned, Best Buy has rotating sales. Be patient and it's likely they will go on sale again. All right, let's wrap up. This laptop ended up being perfect for me. I was planning to get a higher end laptop with a 4K screen and add a second monitor for fast refresh rate gaming. I thought I'd have to settle for an Intel laptop and have to spend around $3,500. Instead, I got a laptop with a fast refresh rate screen, which was actually awesome as I can just use my current 4K monitor when I need to edit videos. It's insanely powerful, it runs cool and quiet, and I love the display. Including the upgrade to 32 gig of RAM and an additional two terabytes of storage, the whole thing cost me 1,650 US dollars. And bonus, it's smaller and lighter than the laptops I was looking at. Yes, there are some niggling issues that I highlighted in this review, but nothing that I'm worried about, especially for the price I paid. If I discover any solutions to the ones I've raised in this video, I'll post them in the description below. Look, before I go, I just want to say this. It's a bit of an end of an era. A year ago, this channel had a couple of hundred subscribers, now over 75,000 when I made this video. This will be the last time that you see me in this apartment as I'm moving to a new place which will have a dedicated YouTube studio. Thank you for being on this journey with me. I appreciate it. If you like this video, you know what to do. Smash that subscribe button, hit the thumbs up and the notification bell. And if you would like to support the channel even more, become a Patreon member. Until next time, I will catch you later.